Hi, I'm Mike Larson with Voice Ratings, coming to you from The Money Show in Philadelphia. And I have Carl Delfeld, the Chief Analyst at Cabot Global Stocks Explorer here to talk a little bit about what he's seeing going on in the markets. Carl, thanks for uh, sitting down for this. Thanks, Mike. Why don't you introduce yourself a little bit and talk about what your uh, publication does and what kinds of markets you cover. Sure. Um, I'm with Cabot Wealth, uh, which is a family of uh, eight uh, newsletters. Okay. Uh, I'm responsible for the international product, so there's a, we search the world for uh, uh, value and growth, okay. and in particular, there's a focus on emerging markets. Okay. Well, we all know there's plenty of news going on, uh, yeah. you know, between U.S. and China, and what the implications are for global growth and markets. And mm -hmm. I understand that's what you've been talking about here at the at the event. So, could you maybe give you know give our viewers an overview of how you see the relations going there and what it means for investors? Sure. Well, in my talk this morning, I. Uh, talked about U.S.-China rivalry, and if you just follow the media, you'd think it just started last month or last year, sure. but actually it goes way back to the very beginning of the American story. When America was a, uh, gained its independence, mm -hmm. uh, China was the largest economy in the world, and then it went into a period of decline. Ameri America, of course, became one of the most successful emerging markets of the 19th century, and now China's come back, roaring back in the last four decades to be right behind the U.S., but the top manufacturer, the top exporter. Uh, and so now we're, I think, entering this era or age of U.S.-China rivalry, and it's going to be with us for decades. You know, I've heard it, other people characterize it as almost like a new Cold War. Do you think that's yes. an accurate way to describe it, and what are the ramifications of that? Well, I think uh, it's a cold economic war for sure. Um, and I think what's happening is, uh, because it, it's, it happened year by year, and the, the U.S., especially U.S. Congress, the U.S. political system, mm -hmm. is a reactive institution, right? Sure. They don't pay attention, and then when something is right in front of them, they overreact. So I think that the ramifications are there's a little bit more uncertainty, and that you really have to be mindful of risk. Okay. Everybody, you know, a lot of people are opining on sort of how this trade and tariff, yes. this phase of this this sort of uh, disagreement is going to play out. What's mm -hmm. kind of your opinion, your read of, of how things are going right now and how they're likely to play out over the next 12 to 24 months? Well, I think a lot of it's politics. And um, ideally, a lot of this negotiation would be done quietly behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, because of the nature of our political system, it's become a sort of like a wedge issue, so to speak. Yeah. So. I don't really expect a great breakthrough, and I know a lot of my subscribers are always asking, when is the trade deal coming? When is the trade? And my, my answer is that there may be some sort of uh, agreement mm -hmm. uh, where, for example, China buys more agricultural goods and we relax some of the tariffs, but it's really just going to be like more of a ceasefire than anything. Yeah. Um, and so I think this is really with us for some time, and I don't think uh, investors really see this as a long-term situation. They see it's something that will be over soon. Mm -hmm. and, and I guess if you had to summarize that as sort of the impact on the market, what does that mean? I mean, what is, what is that going to mean for the S&P? Volatility. Here, right? no, I think it means volatility. I'll give you one example. Yesterday, a lot of the emerging market in Chinese stocks got hit pretty hard mm -hmm. because there's legislation moving through Congress that would restrict Chinese companies, private companies, from doing an IPO. Mm -hmm and having their companies listed on U.S. markets. So obviously, uh, markets don't react very well to that sort of situation. So I just think that we really need to uh, settle in. It's gonna be intense competition mm -hmm. in technology, in resources uh, over the coming decades, and now we have to navigate it. Got it. Yeah. Well, Carl, obviously, as you said, it's going to be a thing that an issue that we're going to be dealing with for a long time. So, could you maybe tell our viewers where it is that they can sort of keep up on what your views are about that market going forward, and maybe if there's a website you can refer them to or something like sure. that? Sure. Uh, there's a couple. Uh, CabotWealth.com is where my newsletter with Cabot, and another uh, club I have for people interested in investing in Asia is called Far East Wealth. Right. .com. So there's two places to start. All right. Great, Carl. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, viewers. Thank you.